five inches having prop wash when I dropped the throttle. Yeah, that uh, that's that that that's what when prop wash happens. What should you do about it? How can you tune out prop wash? The first thing you got to do, Akabele fourteen is you have to uh, you have to make sure that the quad is mechanically sound. Make sure that there are no loose screws. Make sure that none of your frame plates are cracked. None of that stuff. Your flight controller is securely mounted and soft mounted and so forth. Okay? Once it's mechanically sound, the next thing you should do is, I mean, you should put Betaflight 4.3 on it, if at all possible, because it's one of the best flying Betaflights today. Um, then, you're going to want to... Uh, Make sure you have RPM filtering enabled, okay? So if your ESC doesn't support RPM filtering, like you have a BLHeli S ESC, flash BlueJ onto it. If you if you have, if you have BLHeli thirty two, then you're good to go. Okay. Now the at that point, what I would suggest you try. Let me start up Betaflight here real quick. Uh, okay. At that point, what I would do is I would go to PID tuning. I would go to filter settings. And I would start by disabling gyro low pass 2. I just turn that right off. As long as RPM filter is on, you can almost always do that safely. And I would go fly and see if my quad flew badly or if I had hot motors. Any Anytime you're turning off filtering, you just want to... Go a little bit at a time and see if your quad starts to, starts to the motors sound brrr, trilly. If the motors sound rough, if the quad starts going tick 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 like that, um, if the motors are hot, all these things mean you've gone too far. But I would start by turning off gyro low pass two, and then I would work these filter sliders to the right, and I find that you can usually go to one point two or one point three without issue as long as your quad is mechanically sound, right? And once I got them to a point where, like if I if I raised them to 1.5 and the quad started to kind of behave badly, the motors sounded rough, maybe uh, the motors were getting a little hot, I'd back it down a little bit. And I'd find the minimum, the minimum amount of filtering I could get away with. Now, some people would say, well, why don't you turn off gyro low pass one? Whoa, 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 whoa let's be reasonable here. Some people would say, what about turning off the D-term low pass? Eh. Some people might get away with that. In my experience, that's usually a little, that's usually not enough gain for the risk. I could usually get a pretty good flying quadcopter with settings, something like this. And then when I was done with that, we could go to the PID tuning tab. And usually, uh, actually, on Betaflight 4.3, the default PIDs are actually super good. It used to be on 4.2 that I would, like, raise the master multiplier or maybe raise the, the, the tracking and the D and the D-Max. I got to tell you, on Betaflight 4.3, the defaults are actually really good for a lot of setups. But if you're getting a lot of prop wash oscillation, you could try cranking the D-Gain a little bit. Maybe. And see, and, and, and probably get a pretty good prop wash handling by following that general step. Obviously, this is not a pit tuning live stream tutorial, so. Why gyro LPF2 off, says Brandon Beans. Uh, Brandon, it, it's my opinion, and I think there are some other folks out there like Mark Spatz or Chris Rosser uh, who agree with me, although I don't want to, I don't want to put words in their mouth if that's not accurate. But it's my opinion that if you have RPM filtering, you can probably turn off gyro low pass two. And and you you can you're not going to get bad bad effects bad results. So. <clears throat> 